I heard there was this podcast, yo, about something funny like wrestling and so, and you really care about wrestling, don't you? There are drop kicks and leases all over the board, and then something called the Wrestling Hold. It's a super duper fun podcast about wrestling. That wrestling show. That wrestling show. That wrestling show. That wrestling show. Well, Fro and Bill and maybe a guest or two is here to hold your hand and guide you through a podcast about wrestling. We have a lot of extreme fun and that without a gun because I needed something to rhyme fun with. That wrestling show, that wrestling show, that wrestling show, that wrestling show. Well, sit your behinds gently down and listen to our podcast sound and try to guess this week's pro question. You win a lot of cool things and also help Bill with his bill, Bill Bills. That's a super duper fun competition. That wrestling show. 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 That wrestling show That wrestling show That wrestling show Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of That Wrestling Show, the only podcast where all pro wrestling matters. And, Fro, we have uh, a good show, I think, this week. Yeah, uh, not a bad review this week, but next week we're going to talk some uh, things that happened on SmackDown, and we're going to talk about some things that happened on Raw, we'll talk. Maybe talk a little about impact. Was there fucking up as usual? Yeah. Um. Now this week, I I do have a review because I told you guys that I was going to do it. You know, last week, and we had a lot of stuff last week. But I'm gonna, I have a good one today that we're going to talk or that I'm going to review, and we'll have a fun little discussion about Fro. So. Um, plus we'll talk about, um, our early thoughts because nominations for the third annual That Wrestling Award show have already begun. Uh, not all categories have been put out, uh, but we have, I'd say almost most of them out by the time you guys are yeah, listening to this. Yeah, I put my votes... 
yeah, I put my my votes in as well. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. Plus, we do have another round of trivia, and this week begins our big road to WrestleMania trivia contest. This is this is where it begins. Right here this week. So um and I'm gonna go into one of my famous rants this week against Oh, someone who I usually rant about, but this one is going to deserve it. So, okay. can't wait to talk about that one. Is it the new Roman Reigns? Um, well, it has to do with Roman Reigns, but it's not on Roman Reigns. <laughs> oh. So, um, now they are trying to copy Raw and SmackDown. It's almost like. I, I, I'm going to say it now. I'm going to say it now. It's almost like I can't... Like, before before I was like, oh, I can't wait for SmackDown. It's so good. Mm-hmm. It's so trying to be raw right now. It's so boring. You know, I, I'll tell you, Raw this week, and we normally don't ever talk about Raw, SmackDown, you know, but my God, that was such a good show this week. Yeah. Raw was amazing. Oh, Raw was so much fun. I mean, the... the and then, f- then, then, then SmackDown came around, and I was like, okay, <laughs> I like Kevin Owens stuff. Um, uh, the whole Randy Orton storyline with that is kind of interesting. Right. Uh, then they fucked it up with that stipulation at the end uh, that Kevin Owens and Sam Sang will lose their uh, jobs. In yeah. If, if they don't win. Well, I'll t- everybody, everybody, you, me, and the blind guy knows the outcome of that uh, wrestling match. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we do. Like everyone, everyone knows they are not going to fire Kevin Owens and Sam and Sam Sam Sam. They're not insane. Yeah, they're they're not. Um, but you know, I, I want to talk about Raw because there was so much good stuff on Raw. Um the the four way with the cruiserweights. Oh my gosh, when you give those guys time, they yeah. could put on a hell of a performance. Yeah. And that's exactly what we got um with Cedric Alexander, Mustafa Ali, Tony Nese, and Drew Gulak. It was so much fun to watch, you know. It's, it's like you said, it's proving that you need to give people fucking time. If you don't give them time, they don't have any place to shine. There's nobody that watches uh, uh, 205. Well, nobody. well, you know, we, we do have news that we will talk about in a, in a little bit. About the cruiserweights, so. But how interesting is it that USA is going to show NXT for the first week on TV? Okay. Um. Well. Okay. I'm glad. Again, I'm glad you brought that up because because next week on the USA Network is WWE Week, which. Do you think this is something wrong? Well, that's well, that's what I'm going to get to. So, next week, for all of you hardcore, diehard WWE Universe fans, next Monday is Raw, next Tuesday is SmackDown, next Wednesday they're going to do a special airing of NXT, and next Thursday is the Tribute to the Troops show, which, which, you know, happens once a year. Now, you Now, you asked about if... This is a testing ground situation for NXT. I read reports. Yes, I read, folks. Believe it or not, I actually do read. Um, no, but but seriously, because WWE's contract with USA Network, I think, comes to an end next year. If yeah, I, next year, yeah. USA is contemplating doing the following to try to get you or WWE to stay on the USA network. They are willing 
to give up one hour of Monday Night Raw to be used for NXT on Wednesday nights. Meaning, we would be back to two-hour Raws. We don't have to complain and moan about how Raw is too long now. So we'd get... how fucking amazing would that be? Oh, my God. It would be... It would be fantastic. Yeah. Because, I mean, all I ever hear about is, oh, Raw's too long, Raw's too long. If, it is too long, though. No, it is. I'm, well, I mean, this week did not feel long. This week's show did not feel long. But if WWE does resign with the USA Network, USA Network's going to let WWE have three shows on their networks back to back to back. Every week. Think about that, Fro. That's unprecedented. So, because obviously, at this point, WWE wants to get rid of that third hour for all. They know it. We know it. And I think USA, to a degree, knows it as well. But if that happens, that's going to be a big deal. So I, I agree. I think this is a testing ground for NXT. And I hope it works. Because NXT is a good show. Um, other, other things that happened on Raw that I really enjoyed was, and I know I'm going to get shocked and maybe an, a raise of the eyebrow, Jason Jordan. Oh, Jason Jordan. So, so good. He's so fucking good. I love what they're doing with him. Now, and then I turn over to SmackDown and I say, "What is the over the singing gimmick?" Yes. Stop it. Now, Rusev Day. Hey, every day is Rusev Day. Mm -hmm. Now, now, okay, now here's my position with Jason Jordan, or right now where he is. And I was talking to a friend of mine last night because I was recording. Something that, that I'll mention in the new year that you guys will be able to listen to. I look at Jason Jordan right now. And he is in the same position right now as The Rock was 20 years ago. And and and, and I and, and I wanna and I wanna defend myself on this. I'm not saying Jason Jordan is going to become the next rock. I'm saying when The Rock was in that phase where WWE was shoving him down, you know, everyone's throats and the fans were hating him and it was die, Rocky, die. This is what we got with Jason Jordan right now. WWE is shoving him down his throats. Everyone does not like him. It's almost die, Jordan, die, except he can wrestle. At some point, the switch is going to come where Jason Jordan becomes somebody that the people like, I think. It's going to take time, but when it happens, come back to the show. We'll be the ones to say we told you so. Here's my question, and I actually mean this question. Okay. Is Jason, <laughs> this is such a fun question to ask today, <laughs> all day. Is Jason Jordan going to be the WrestleMania match? Ooh. Yes, WrestleMania, Jason Jordan against his father. Oh, that could be very, very good. Because I, I think I'm beginning to see her tackle against Jason Jordan at WrestleMania. Oh, that would be so big. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh, I'd, I'd be for that. Mm -hmm. I Me would too. be all for that. Mm -hmm. Me too. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, the other news to talk about. Um, this next story involves New Japan and Access TV because Access TV uh, is the home of New Japan here in the U.S. They sent out a press release over the weekend. For those of you who will not be able to watch Wrestle Kingdom 12, uh, don't worry, because Saturday night, January the 6th, 
Access TV will show parts of Wrestle Kingdom 12 in a three-hour special event. And they will air the, the three big matches, basically. Omega and Jericho, Okada and Naito, and Tanahashi and White. It's so funny that that Chris Jericho is one of the main events. It's unbelievable. Uh, it's, it is really unbelievable. It's amazing. Um, and and like I said last week, our first show when we come back in 2018, Fro and I are going to discuss everything that happened at Wrestle Kingdom 12 because we are both taking the day off from work respectively, uh, from our jobs. Uh, I have to get up at the butt crack of dawn that morning. <laughs> and I have to just get up. Yeah. <laughs> so. I, 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 I'm, I'm in a, a situation where where I, I'm going to be the one that hears other complaints about staying up to LA or to LA. Well. It's usually me that complains. Hey, if I only do this once a year, I am fine with it. Yeah, and I do it uh, more than that, so. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, now I want to touch real quick because we talked about the cruiserweights earlier. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, WWE has announced that starting in January, 205 Live will be having their own house shows. Um, they will be, uh, the first shot will be the weekend of January the 18th through the 20th. So that would be the week before the Royal Rumble. I'm not sure I quite understand how they are going to fill a whole fucking house show with. Well, the, the good thing about this is they're not going to, like, the big arenas. They're not going to a Madison Square Garden. They're not going to the Staples Center. They're going to like the smaller venues. Mm. So, so it's uh, pretty good. It's going to be cheaper uh, tickets and shorter shows, probably. Maybe. Um, and I have the dates and the locations for those who are interested. Um, the these are the three places for the first set of live uh, 205 live events. January 19th will be in Kingston, Rhode Island at the Ryan Center. Mm -hmm. January 20th will be in Lowell, Massachusetts at the Lowell Memorial Auditorium. And January 21st will be in Poughkeepsie, New York at the Mid-Hudson Civic Center. So... Um, and I would imagine tickets are going to go on sale real, real soon. Maybe by the time you guys are listening to this. Um, you know what? I'm in the mood for some trivia. I am ready. I want to throw, I want to rebound from last week's (laughs) disaster. Disaster. Yeah, I picked uh, one of the most uh, infamous in your house, in your house 8, Beware of the Dog. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, why is it infamous? You ask, well, it's two, two fucking days. Yeah, I did. <laughs> uh, but, uh, and here's my question for the listener. Yes, this is for the listener. What state was it in? Ah. It was it was both in in different places in the state. So it was in the same state. Yes. Okay. Yes, it was. Uh, do you know the state, by the way? Uh, I believe I do. So I'm not going to say okay. it. I'm not going to say it on air. Yeah. So in in your house eight, beware of the dog in two places. So commentators were uh, Vince McMahon and Jerry Lawler. Uh, interviewer was Doc Hendricks and Kurt Henning. Ring announcer were uh, Howard Finkel. Mm-hmm. Referee was Jack Bowen, Tim White, Earl Hebner, and Mike Kohido. Ah, uh, Mike Kyoto. Mike Kyoto. 
play that quite well. Yeah. Uh, that was the first day. And then uh, the second day, the commentator was Jim Ross and uh, Mr. Perfect. And the ring announcer was uh, Bill Tom. Okay. The referee was uh, Tim White, Mike Quinta, and Jack Dorn as well. So, let's uh, concentrate on the first day because that was the day with all the fucking matches. Yeah, the fun one. <laughs> the fun the fun day. Uh, let's go F3 uh, for all. Um, it was the tag team match for the WWF Tag Team Championship. It was uh, the Sloping Grounds against the Godwins. I do remember this because Sonny was in the middle of this story. It was a weird storyline. It, it would take too long, I think, for me to explain it. Um, but Smoking Guns won back the tag team titles. Yes. Then we have a dark match uh, with Isaac Yayan, DDS, and Bobby Holly in a singles match. Oh, dear God. Now, when you mean by a dark match, do you mean by there were no lights at all, or...? <laughs> In the games, the match was a dark match. Yeah. Oh, uh, God. So it wasn't, uh, it wasn't on the paper. I'm gonna... Or... I'm gonna say Bob Holly won that match. Yeah. All right. Then we have a singles match uh, with Mark Mario, with Sable against uh, Hunter Hearst and You never heard about him. Yeah. He didn't get too far. Um, yeah. Mark Merrow won that match. It did. Then we have uh, a Caribbean strap match, and this was a dark match as well. <laughs> uh, with Stone Cold Steve Austin against Sami Vega. This was, this was the match where the blackout went. Yes. Um, Savio won that match. It did. And when we, we meant, and when we say the, the, the light went, it actually, actually went. It did. Yes. I've actually seen this in your house, believe it or not. <laughs> then we have a singles match show, also a dark match. It was Vader against Yokozuna. You notice we're going to be saying dark match for a while, folks, so just get yes. used to the joke. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> um, I think Vader won yes. that match. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, no, it was Yokozuna. What? Yokozuna won? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's better. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> then we have uh, a casket match for a WWF Intercontinental match, and this was also a dark match. And it was the Undertaker against Coldest. Yeah, and someone was going to end up in the dark, too. Um, yeah. Goldust won that match. Hello? Yes. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yes. What did you say? I said someone was going to go into the dark in that match, so. Yeah. Yes. Did you want? Goldust. Yes, it is. Then uh, we have a singles match that also was a dark match. Jesus. A lot of dark matches there. Uh, and it was Justin Bradshaw against Jake Roberts. Ooh. Ooh wow. I'm going to say Jake Roberts won that match. Yes. And do you know how... <laughs> I'm watching the time I have to double check this. Do you know how long this match is? Do I even want to? Uh, go ahead. It's 30 seconds. 20 seconds? No, 30. Oh, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Wow. How is that possible? <laughs> Anything can happen in the World Wrestling Federation. Then we have a singles match for the WWF World Heavyweight Championship, and it was a lot of people. Hmm. 
para entonces Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. It was uh, that ending was really well done, I thought. Yeah. It's one of the only times I can say I enjoyed the long contest. Yeah. And this was the longest match of the night with 17 minutes and 21 seconds. Then we have two dark matches to run it uh, to the run home. Uh, yeah, just run that joke to the ground. Yes. Uh, then we have Derek Lawler against Ahmed Johnson. <laughs> Ahmed Johnson had to win that match. Yeah. And we have Owen Hart against the Ultimate Warrior. Oh. I'm going to say the Warrior won that match. His brother has been very sick. Yes. All right. He didn't say which one, but he's very good. Had an upper turn, an upper Probably the sick one. Oh, the sequel? I was talking to your mom. No. I said probably the sick one. Uh, then we have the 28th of May. <laughs> uh, and we have three matches. Right. And if there is another Caribbean staff match, and it's so called Steve Austin against Sabio Vega. Hey, wait, did they have that match? <laughs> I think they had that like two days ago. Yeah, um, did they have that match two days ago? They did. Um, yeah. Savio Vega won that match. He did. Isn't that strange how he won both hmm. of the matches? It is. Almost like wrestling is planned or something. I know. <laughs> but then you have a singles match. It's so funny. With Vader against Yuko Soto. Hey, didn't we have that as well? Yeah, I think we did. Okay, Vader had to win that one. Yes. So All they changed right. it around the second day. Oh my god. Why? Oh, I know why. Because the light went. <laughs> And then they have a casting match for the WWF Intercontinental Championship, and it's Goldust against the Undertaker. Goldust won that match. Yes. Uh, what a pick I Oh, well. So, it's so, and like, it's so funny that they had to reschedule the pay per view. Yeah. Because as WWE learned... And you know what? To date, it is the only pay-per-view that has ever been hauled in this state. Yeah. That's the listeners are probably going to tell us. Oh, WWE learned that Mother Nature is the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. <laughs> Fuck no, I don't want to Oh, that were there, and, and the people who ordered the pay per view. Oh man! Wow, that. <laughs> but you know what, though, I do want to say one thing, and then, and then we're gonna get on with our uh, news and such. With, because I think that event was held Memorial Day weekend. I, I think I might be wrong on that. And usually, you know, in, in this part of the U.S., on the, on the East Coast around the Mid-Atlantic, normally we get a pretty bad thunderstorm like that weekend every year, or it feels like every year. That just happened to be that day down there. Yeah. So. No, I feel, I feel, I feel sorry for them. I, I really do. If any of you went to that event, please let us know. We would love to talk to you about that. Oh, yeah, yeah. We would. Uh, all right. 
let's get back into some news to discuss. And this next story is actually positive news for Impact Wrestling, believe it or not. What? I'm, wrestling and, and, and positive news of Impact Sports? I know, right? Um, They hired yesterday, or a couple of days ago, depending on when you're listening to this, they hired Don Callis and Scott Demore as executive vice presidents. Yeah. And they are also going to be a part of the, yeah, they're just going to be executive, uh, the senior executive team. Uh, they will form a three-member committee with, with overall responsibility for developing the creative direction for the company. Um, and they will report to Ed Nordholm. So, and one thing that should be mentioned before anyone gets up in a roar, especially you New Japan fans, Don Callis will still be allowed to do commentary for New Japan Pro Wrestling for their English listeners. So, but, but this is good news. It this is. is uh, this is actually really good news. Uh, when I read this, I, I, I thought maybe maybe there is hope for TNA. Then I laughed for myself and I said, oh, "It's TNA. They are going to fuck it up somehow." So, and plus, I mean, these guys are smart guys, Demore and Callus. So, yeah, yeah, hopefully they'll, hopefully they'll get this one right. I think they did, but... Oh, boy. Um, you know what? I'm going to get into my rant now, because I know my nephews will be here in a little bit, so I'm going to get my anger out on this story. So, uh, this past Monday night was the WWE Network premiere of Straight to the Source, the new show with um, Corey Graves. And he interviewed Roman Reigns. That was his first guess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I saw this was a thing. I, I was thinking, no, I don't. I don't want to say this. <laughs> well, during the interview, uh, Roman Reigns said that he is the best performer in ring in the world right now. <laughs> now I actually have to I, I, I have to laugh at that too. Oh that's funny. Oh my god. Really? Really? <laughs> How the fuck dare he say something stupid like that? Hey, when <laughs> When WWE has oh given you God. multiple opportunities, you can believe whatever the hell you want. Oh my God, what the moron. Well, one wrestler in particular <laughs> did not agree with what he said. <laughs> Number one on the list. <laughs> and it happens to be someone that I loathe. Loathe. Okay. Su okay. Superstar Billy Graham. <laughs> uh, where is it always assholes? Uh, oh. AKA Professional Wrestling's Grumpiest Old Man. <laughs> fucking moron. He posted the following on Facebook. And I'm going to read this. He titled this uh, short message, Ego Maniac. <laughs> huh, I wonder who that sounds like, Billy. Sounds a little like him. Ego Maniac. That is the only word I can think of to describe Roman Reigns in an interview he did last... <laughs> He did last night on the new WWE Network Straight to the Source with Corey Graves. Now I want to see this interview. This, <laughs> this egomaniac, Roman Reigns, gave the following lofty self-assessment of, quote, You know I'm the best performer in ring in the world right now, 
unquote. He went on to say he is WWE's top guy every day of the week. This guy is so full of bullshit, I can smell him all the 3,000 miles away here in the desert of Phoenix, Arizona. I want to know what this guy has been smoking for real. Pot, maybe? He always looks half-stoned and in a semi-comatose condition anyway. One fan has written in response to Reigns, The chicks dig him. Oh God, man, come on. Just because the chicks dig you, does that mean you are over? This guy is so full of himself, he makes me sick. This is your future, fans. You gotta live with this second rock who thinks he is a god. Good luck. I, I mean, I mean, I can understand storyline uh, reasons for him to say it. But <laughs> the sad thing, the sad thing about this is that it probably will lose it. I, I, I think Roman Reigns Thing. He's that good. He probably does. But you know something, superstar Billy Graham? You were the exact same way that <laughs> Roman Reigns was 40 years ago. When you yeah. were at the peak of your prime, when you were at the top, you were at the very best. You thought the same freaking way. And you know what happened? The following year, you lost the championship. And your life has never been the same since, Mr. Graham. Because you are nothing more than an old crippled who was a steroid user before steroids was even a thing in society. <laughs> you are nothing more than a bitter old man. You're the biggest flip-flopper in the history of wrestling you flip-flop more than Democrats and Republicans combined do. So, and and you're Mr. Anti-WWE. What the hell are you doing watching a WWE Network program? Jeez, you're yeah. such a freaking hypocrite. You're the... Wasn't he on Twitter? and was like, I'm never going to watch Chevrolet. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you, are, you are the oldest piece of shit walking God's green earth. You should just shut the hell up. Nobody gives two shits about what you think. Just go away. Just go in the deserts of Phoenix, Arizona. Rot and die. I'm never going to watch it. <laughs> I'm never going to watch it. And, and, and you know... <laughs> and you know, you know what the sad thing is, Fro, about that? Mm -hmm. I, I like Billy Graham when he wrestled. Mm -hmm. when, he, when he wrestled... That dude was something else. You, when you take and now and now he's just a prick. He's just a prick. <laughs> he is straight and simple. Yeah. It it just makes me sick. It just does. I mean, and 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 you know, um, Joe Marota from our vantage point. Um, you know, we we've talked every once in a while, and he has said, you know. Bill is the nicest guy on, you know, in the podcast community. He's one of the nicest guys in the podcast community. Joe, you just heard a little bit of my bad side, my angry side this week. So, but don't worry. You you and Michael are on my good side. So, don't don't ever worry. Don't ever worry, all right? But you just heard what it's like when Bill gets, Well, actually that was the calm version of when Bill gets mad. When Bill gets but the problem is that he, he kind of he, he kind of has a point. I mean, Roman Reigns is <laughs> a lot of things, but he, <laughs> he's not the best in ring. Oh no, he's definitely not. Oh no, no. By any any fucking standard. <laughs> no, I agree with you. I mean, I, he's pretty he's pretty low on my list. On, on wrestlers, I would say, like, oh, 
to watch watch the in ring performance of Roman Reigns. <laughs> right. <laughs> of Roman Reigns. Oh my god, I can't believe he said that. <laughs> how, how much you want to bet Vince had him say those lines? Oh a lot of money. A lot of money. Um speaking of lots of money, Bret Hart is Bret Hart is looking for some money. But it's not for the reason you think. Bret Hart is suing a doctor for $1 million over an alleged botched surgery. Bret Hart had surgery on his, on his wrist bones two years ago. However, uh, according to the papers in, in the lawsuit and in, the art, in this article, the surgery left Hart without functional use of the fingers. Now, um, according to the lawsuit, the doctor in question, Dr. Justin Young, who is a plastic surgeon, told Hart he could fix the issue of his wrists via partial fusion of the wrist bones. And Brett was left without functional use of his fingers. The lawsuit alleges that Young and his team left, quote, a tourniquet on Mr. Hart's right arm on too long, such that the circulation of the nerves and tendons to his right thumb and index finger were damaged by a prolonged, insufficient supply of oxygen. So, actually, you know what? I'm not going to make fun of Bret Hart. He might have a good point there. If this doctor botched a surgery, you know. So, hope uh, hope Red gets the money. Yeah. Um, we got a new book that's going to be coming out in early 2018. Um, you might not know the name that I'm going to mention, but some of our fans probably do. Doctor D. David Schultz. For those who don't know who he is, he is famously, or infamously, depending on how you look at it, known for kicking John Stossel's ass in a story that 2020 put out 30 years ago about professional wrestling. Well, Dr. D is coming out with an autobiography co with co-author John Cosper, and it is called don't Call Me Fake, The Real Story of Dr. D. David Schultz. The current, the current plan is for the book to be released sometime in January as the majority of the work has been completed. This is from Mike Johnson of PW Insider. The book will cover Schultz's life as a professional wrestler as well as his post-career as a bounty hunter. Okay, now he would be a bounty hunter I would put money on. I would. Over the course of his bounty hunting career, Schultz had a 100% capture rate, and those he brought back never skipped again. The book will feature over 100 photos from Schultz's personal collection, including the photos that would have exposed kayfabe back in the 1980s. The book will be over 460 pages in total. Whoa. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot of reading, folks. So, um, you know what? I've always found Doctor D to be a very interesting person in the history of wrestling. I might give that book a check. I might. So, yeah. So, if you're a fan of '80s wrestling, or if you remember Doctor D, David Schultz. Go get this book, folks. I'm actually reading a wrestling book at the moment. I don't I yeah, I, I am. Uh, I will. Uh, I will tell you uh, which one it is. It's the death of doubles. Uh, WCW. Doubles by Buddy Reynolds and Brian Alvarez. Narrated by Brian Alvarez. I've heard a lot of good things about that book. I fucking love it. It's really, really good. 
I actually started the other day reading uh, a wrestling book as well. Um, Bill Apter's autobiography called Is Wrestling Fixed? I didn't even know it was broken. And so far, it's... <laughs> I know, I love the title. That's I, a good title. I, I love the title. Oh, and so far, good. it's a really good book. So, yeah, yeah I, I know uh, one of our friends, our listener, Brian, uh, who helps with the convention, he has read that book, and he really enjoyed um, the book. So... Definitely check that out. Um, okay, briefly, let's talk about uh, how voting is going for the third annual That Wrestling Award Show, which um, voting is going to continue until December 18th because that's going to be the day that I will come on. I, I will do uh, a quick pod or a quick audio release announcing all the nominees uh, for the different awards. And... One thing I want to mention, and I want to remind everyone who is doing these votes right now, or putting in their nominees, you can put multiple nominations in. You don't have to just do one. You can put multiple in. And we lost Fro there. Um, so, and we'll get Fro back on in a minute. But, you know, and, and first off, I just want to say, I'm, I'm glad everyone is, oh, there's Fro. What happened there? Hello? Yellow? Uh, hold on. Apparently, Fro is having some technical difficulties. Um, so as we're, so as Fro is working on that, um, okay, hold on. Um, you know what? We'll give Fro a moment to get himself back together. All right, we have Fro back. Welcome back, Fro. Thank you. So, anyway, as I was saying, um, when you guys do vote for your nominees, please remember you can vote. You can put multiple nominees in. Right. So, so, you know, just because you do one, like. Just because you do one doesn't mean that, you know, that's your official one. I mean, it is your official, but you could do other nominations. You could put others in. So, it's okay. Um, so, please remember that when you're going through this. You guys have another week and a half because the the last day or the last, like, once the last pay-per-view of the year happens, that's going to slowly be when you guys have less time to do it so right um so please just remember that um when you guys are doing it yeah i can hear you okay good so um again on december 18th um i'll come on and i will announce all the nominees for the third annual that wrestling award show and if you have friends that aren't on in this group what are you doing invite them in uh we we or i changed the name of the group because I think we were getting confused with our Facebook page. So our group is now called That Wrestling Show Fan Group. I saw that. Uh, uh, and that's a uh, good... Uh, yeah. Un- unless you guys can think of a, another, you know, name than that. But I don't know. Fanboys. <laughs> Fanboys. <laughs> oh, boy. Hi. That's all right. That's all right. It's such, it's such a fan. It is. It's such a fan boy of that person. Yep. So, oh, oh, you know what? One more thing, and then we're then I'm going to get into the review. Um, over the weekend, uh, Chikara had their season finale, which again I did not know was going to be streaming live. Otherwise, I would have done coverage of that. So, yeah. Uh, but they made a big announcement, and, and this is a pretty cool announcement. Um, okay. Starting next year, all of their Philly shows, all their shows that they do at the Chikara Wrestle Factory in Philadelphia, will be streamed live on their streaming service, Chikara Topia. Oh, that's so, pretty good guess. So next year, whenever a Chikara... A wrestling show takes place in Philadelphia, and if you can't make it, you can watch the show 
live on Chikaratopia. And I'm looking at their schedule, and as of right now, there are 10 shows that are going to take place in Philadelphia next year um, for live coverage. So I'm going to try to get as many of them in. I can't guarantee I'm going to get all of them in because of, you know, different dates and stuff. But um, I can tell you that their first show back next year, which is going to be the same day as the Royal Rumble, uh, January the 28th, that, w that show will be covered on Twitter. And the name of that show is Beware the Snowman. Beware the snowman. Beware the snowman. <laughs> so, okay. yeah, so. That sounds like a horror movie. Yeah. So, um, you know, as more info comes, uh, we'll let you guys know. But 2018, you're going to get a lot more Chikar coverage on our Twitter, uh, on our Twitter handle, our Twitter name. Group thingy. How much is it? Uh, a month. Yeah. Oh, how much is it? That's. A, I think it's like seven ninety nine a month. Yeah, seven ninety nine a month. Oh, not, bad. not bad at all. So, Fro, uh, you mentioned earlier that you were currently reading the death of WCW, <laughs> and it's sort of ironic. Okay, maybe I'm using that word wrong on this one. It's sort of interesting that you mentioned WCW because that's what I'm reviewing this week. Because, you know, we're getting close to the holidays and, you know, we all like gifts. So I figured... Oh my God, what, have, what have you seen this time? Well, I figured I'd give you guys a special gift. An episode of WCW Saturday Night. Oh, a good, a good show. From May 13th, 1995. Because, you know, it's very close to Christmas. May, May, December, you know. Um, This is a short episode. I'm, I'm going to mention that right now. This is the one-hour version of WCW Saturday Night. And you guys will find out why... Uh, during this review. So, Fro, are you ready to go back to 1995? <laughs> Did any... Well, real quick, what what happened for you in 1995? 95? Uh, I remember what happened in 94. That was the Winter Olympics, and they loved it. 95? Uh, I'm not sure how old I was. I was born in 79. 95. So that would have made you... You would have been maybe 16? 16, yeah. Alright, because I... I was... I turned 10 that year. Oh. Oh. So, little Bill. I know. I so little old. Bill. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I remember WCW Saturday Night being on at 6.05 Eastern. So... Um... Let's get into it. This week's episode of WCW Saturday Night is brought to you by Twix. One great snack after another. <laughs> was that their slogan? That was their slogan at the time. <laughs> That's a bad slogan. Well, it's not as bad as uh, Jolly Ranchers right now. What's Jolly Ranchers right now? We suck. I'm serious. That is their current catchphrase. <laughs> or you suck. I think it's either we uh, suck or you suck. One of the two. Do you remember the milk campaign that they had? Where, like, uh, uh, what was the slogan again? Not, Get it right? Oh, God. Yeah. Wow. Um, so, in our intro, we are told that we have tag team competition this week. We, and we got some good tag teams on the show. Plus, our featured match 
is a first round match in the U.S. title tournament. Plus, are you ready for this? Randy Savage gets advice from his dad. So I can't wait to get into that segment. Uh, Tony Schiavone and Bobby Heenan are the hosts for this show, and we are a week away from Slamboree, a Legends reunion, 1995. And, And the big main event, Vader and Ric Flair, Ric Flair being reinstated, uh, in WCW, and you know this is his first big match. They're going to face Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage in the main event of Slamboree. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. So we go to our opening contest, and it is the tag team Stars and Stripes. Yes, Fro, that was a real tag team. It was the Patriot and Marcus Bagwell before he became buff. Yeah. They are in tag team action as they take on the team of Barry Hardy and Randy Speaker. <laughs> Randy Speaker? Yes, that is a real name. That's a good, that's, that's a good name. Um, Randy Speaker has a receding hairline. Uh, you could tell yeah. he's starting to go bald. So during the match, uh, Tony and Bobby talk about the WCW US title tournament as it is going on. The Patriot, he has a first round match on the main event tomorrow night against Ric Flair. <laughs> This shocked me, Fro. Let me tell you why this shocked me. For years, all I remembered was Ric Flair's first match back is at Slamboree 95. Yeah, I remember that as well. Nope. Big middle finger. Ric Flair's on the main event tomorrow night against the Patriot. Jerks. So... After getting upset hearing about that, um, Bobby asks Tony who he thinks is going to win the tournament. And he thinks that Sting will win the tournament. He thinks Sting is the odds-on favorite, which is not a bad pick. And Tony asks Bobby who he thinks is going to win the tournament. And he thinks that Ming is going to win the tournament. And we get this whole dialogue of... Them saying, oh, you agree with me. No, I said Ming was going to win. You said Sting was going to win? No, no, I said Ming was going to win. So we agree. Yeah, no, no. It was, it was, you know, it was bad. It was. Um, this is your typical squash tag match. Uh, Stars and Stripes get the win with a really cool looking finishing move, which was... Patriot has a vertical suplex, and Bagwell does a cross body onto the person in the suplex position. It's a really cool looking finishing move. So, uh, Stars and Stripes get the win as the Patriot wrestles Ric Flair on the main event tomorrow. Boy, is that a slap to the face. Oh, no, Ric Flair's not going to ra- wait till Slamboree. He's wrestling on the main event. F you. (laughs) So Tony Schiavone has an interview, and it is with Sting. Not not, not Ming, Fro. Sting. Okay, I got this. this. So uh, Tony asks Sting about his upcoming match at Slamboree because he is going to face Big Bubba in a lights-out match. And he also is asked about the U.S. title tournament because in the second round, he is going to face Mr. Wonderful, Paul Orndorff. Sting said, or Sting has been asked, how can he handle wrestling Big Bubba at Slamboree and wrestling Mr. Wonderful in the second round of the title tournament? And he's like, 
Well, I think people should be asking Big Bubba if he can handle wrestling Alex Wright in the tournament and then wrestling me at Slamboree. Because I can juggle. I can juggle both of these. And then he ends up saying how WCW is the number one wrestling organization in the world. Woo! Mm. So, uh, we come back from commercial and we get a promo from Vader, Arn Anderson, and Ric Flair because they're involved in the main event at Slamber. Oh, oh no, wait a minute. Hold on. I forgot. Uh, before we get to that, some commercials that I got to mention. Hey, Fro, have you ever wanted to talk to Hulk Hogan? Yeah. Well, now you can. You could call the Hulk Hogan hotline. Hulk Hogan hotline. Yes. Really? Yep. Just dial one nine hundred seven three seven Hulk. All call. All calls cost a dollar forty nine per minute. Kids, please ask your parents permission before calling. Um. It was an automatically service. Probably. Yeah. Um. Hello, you're calling to Hulk Hogan. <laughs> I'm a racist in the future. Aw. Um, so, are you looking for the best seat? <laughs> I know. So, Fro, are you looking for the best seat to watch a baseball game? Yes. Well, tune in to TBS tonight because the Atlanta Braves are hosting the Cincinnati Reds at 705 Eastern only on TBS. Actually, the Atlanta Braves, real quick, they would go on to win the World Series that year, for those who care. Uh, we got a commercial for Twix, where a brother is sitting or painfully through her sister's or his sister's piano recital, and as soon as it's done, he goes outside and he has uh, some tricks, some Twix. Oh. And, uh... How about working at a pizza place, doing their boxes? You know, that gets real boring. So you should step into a Slim Jim. Need a little spice. And then there's also a commercial for Castrol GTX. So, all right. So now we go to comments from Vader, Arn Anderson, and Ric Flair. And this is the only bad part of the show. Because... When Vader is talking, there's something wrong with the editing because it is hard because it is hard to hear him talk at first because the fan noise is still going on. You know, like the audio, the taped fan noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's hard to hear him at first. But Aww. but uh they do manage to fix it and Vader calls himself Arn Anderson and Ric Flair, the big three. <laughs> the big three. The big three mm. of wrestling. Mm. Um, Arn Anderson, who is their corner man in the main event at Slamboree, talks about how he's going to DDT the Renegade in five seconds. And Ric Flair is Ric Flair, so I can't make fun of him at all. Exactly. We have more tag team action. The Nasty Boys come out as they face the team of Chick Donovan and Todd Zane. Probably no relation to Sammy. During this match... <laughs> during this match, uh, Bobby Heenan becomes very insensitive. Because um, Randy Savage's dad, Angelo Poffo, is going to be inducted into the WCW Hall of Fame during Slamboree. And Bobby Heenan goes on the literal verbal warpath. Because he talks about how he is not getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. And how Tonto, Wahoo McDaniel, is getting in. And how 
some Japanese chef who works at the back of a restaurant is getting into the Hall of Fame, and how oh some and how some fat redneck that no one can understand is getting into the Hall of Fame, but oh. not he. He's done everything for the business. Oh. So for that those of you, sense. so uh, for those who are wondering who else he is describing, uh, Tonto is Wahoo McDaniel. The chef is Antonio Inoki. And the fat redneck is Dusty Rhodes. Uh, that is... Why would they use so many racist gimmicks sometimes? It's 1995. No one is that sensitive in 95. Um, that's the highlight of the match. Uh, Nasty Boys... Get... <laughs> That is the highlight of the match. Oh my god. Because the Nasty Boys get the win after yeah. Sags does a terrible looking elbow drop. I mean, it's bad looking. And Brian Nobbs, after the match, goes to the camera and says that he guarantees they are going to win the WCW tag titles at Slamboree. And... I'll explain why in a minute. Because it is now time for the WCW Control Center with Mean Gene Okerlund. And he's talking about Slamboree. Slamboree is only one week away fro, from St. Petersburg, Florida. And uh, Mean Gene talks about how there's going to be a Legends match at Slamboree as it will be Dick Murdoch against Wahoo McDaniel. I've never heard of him after. Wow. And uh, Mean Gene also talks about the WCW Hall of Fame and the people that are going into the Hall of Fame this year. And actually, I'll pull up the class to tell you who ultimately got in. But announced for the Hall of Fame includes Wahoo McDaniel, Antonio Inoki, Angelo Poffo, and Dusty Rhodes. And, and their newest person that is that was announced to get in, Terry Funk. Mm, Terry Funk I never heard of. So uh the the class uh for the WCW Hall of Fame of nineteen ninety five, and this ends up being the last class of the WCW Hall of Fame is Wahoo McDaniel, Dusty Rhodes, Antonio Inoki, Angelo Poffo, Terry Funk, Big John Studd, and Gordon Soley. That is your final class for the WCW Hall of Fame. So yeah, pretty pretty good group, not going to lie. So, um anyway, let's get to the card, the main event, the big tag match, Vader and Ric Flair against Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage. And we have some words from Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage. So, you know, they're in front of their green screen and they talk about the big match that's taking place and how they have a secret a, a secret weapon for this match. And it happens to be Randy Savage's dad, and Angelo Poffo. <laughs> because Poffo has been teaching the both of them how to get out of the figure four leg lock and how to get out of different moves. And then in the middle of this promo, and this is where it gets really weird, Fro. They talk about the renegade. And here... In the green screen is the shot of the renegade, and there's lightning going off, and there's thunder and lightning, and it makes absolutely no sense whatsoever because wow. they are the monster maniacs. The monster maniacs? The monster maniacs. Okay, I've never heard of them either. I, honestly, I did not remember them being called that. Uh, other matches that will take place at Slamboree, a Legends reunion, includes Sting against Big Bubba in a Lights Out match. Arn oh, was that the match that everybody talked about in the competition? 
Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, this was a different. This was a different lights out match. Um, Arn Anderson is going to defend the WCW Television Title against Alex Wright. The Nasty Boys challenge Harlem Heat for the WCW Tag Team Titles, and this is the Nasty Boys' last shot at the Tag Team Championship. Also at Slamboree, we have Kevin Sullivan facing The Butcher, a.k.a. Brutus Beefcake. And, in what should sound like a great match, The Great Muda against Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. Oh, I would actually like to see. And I believe that is the card for Slamboree, those matches. <laughs> Oh, uh, don't forget to call the WCW hotline. Mean Gene's got the scoop on classy Freddy Blassie and another old guy. 1-900-909-9900. I don't know. Um, so now we go to our next match, as it is Sergeant Craig Pittman going up against Scott Armstrong. Yes. Wow. That's Scott Armstrong before he became a referee. Yeah. Um, this is a decent match. This is not a... I mean, you could say it's a squash match, but it's not really a squash match because Scott Armstrong gets some offense in and he actually is the first person to get a pin attempt on Craig Pittman. Um, but it only goes for a one count. Um... Uh, Sergeant Pittman, for the rest of the match, dominates the, uh, this contest. He does a nice-looking throw, like, spear headbutt in the corner to the midsection of Scott Armstrong. It's a cool-looking move. And then he ends uh, Scott Armstrong off with the code red, which is nothing more than your basic armbar. So Sergeant Craig Pitbull Pittman from the Marines, and he is a real-life Marine, uh, he got the win. And you know the uh, saying, Fro, once a Marine, always a Marine. Yeah, John Cena likes them up the, every day. <laughs> so does The Miz. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Aww. I know. <laughs> We're being mean. Marine 6, why do we need another Marine? Aww. Um. So we come back. It's Tony Even Schiavone. Yeah, even more Marine here. Uh, it's Tony Schiavone, and as Tony calls him, Mr. Politically Incorrect Bobby Heenan on commentary for our next match, which is the Blue Bloods, the team of Lord Stephen Regal and Robert of Eaton, or Earl Robert of Eaton, a.k.a. Bobby Eaton, for those who don't know. They are in tag action against the team of Kip B and Mark Starr. And during the beginning of the match, you have a small section of women doing a USA chant. And it is very, Aww. it is very weak. USA! 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 It, it, it was bad. Um, but if you want to look up, uh, Guys who are tag team specialists. Bobby but, Eden is a tag team specialist. Or, yeah. pardon me, Earl Robert of Eden is a tag team specialist. And he and Regal are very good together as a tag team. And they are just so smooth. And the end of the match, um, Eden hits his leg drop, which used to be called, at this point in time, the Alabama Jam, is now called the Tower of London. And then Regal tags in, he puts on the Regal stretch, and Regal and Eden get the win. And they have put notice that whoever wins the tag title match at Slamboree, they want the next shot at the titles. So we'll see how that goes. Oh, also, during that match, I forgot to mention this, Fro. I think you'll like this piece of news. 
They're going to do a live episode of WCW Saturday Night in two weeks. <laughs> Would you like to know where? Yes, please. At the Charlotte International Motor Speedway. Okay. I, I kid you not, they're going to host a live episode of WCW Saturday Night at a racetrack. And this is before the big race that takes place on Memorial Day weekend in Charlotte, North Carolina, the Coca-Cola 600. And during, during that event, they are going to have, and I know you're on the edge of your seat for this, bro, the Slim Jim Challenge. It is going to be a one-night, eight-man, single elimination tournament where the winner is the number one contender to the world television title. I kid you are in stunned silence. Yeah. <laughs> um, I could actually get those results right now if you want to know how it went. Yes, please. All right, I'm, we're gonna go into this. Uh, let me let me find it. All right. Uh, oh, there we go. It is uh, like I said. This was a live episode. This was on the intersection of Trade and Tryon Streets. Um, here are the results from this. The semifinal matches of this tournament. Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff defeats Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Brian Pillman defeats Big Bubba. And the final match, because it was not an eight-man elimination tournament, it ended up being four. The final match, Paul Orndorff defeats Brian Pillman to be the number one contender for the WCW television title. Other matches that took place on this episode include the Nasty Boys defeating George South and Mike McKeefer, Ming defeating Mark Starr, and Diamond Dallas Page defeating Kip Abi. Wow. Yeah. That's, that sounds horrendous. Yep. I can't wait till that's on the network. <laughs> wow. Oh my goodness. All right, so uh, before we go to our featured match, um, we are reminded once again that once WCW Saturday night is over, to tune in to Atlanta Braves baseball as they take on Deion Sanders and the Cincinnati Reds at 7.05 Eastern. So now we go to, oh gosh, this. Randy Savage getting advice from his dad. So, Randy Savage. How is this a thing? Like, <laughs> just how, 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 how is this a thing on a paper? This is this is just a. So Randy Savage is on. Uh, looks like a pier somewhere in Florida with his dad Angelo Pafo and his dog. And Randy talks to his dad, and he's like, "Uh, dad." I got something I want to ask you. You know, I've been doing this a long time. I've fought thousands and thousands of matches. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we got this match with Ric Flair and Vader. I mean, Hogan and I, yeah, we, we got him reinstated. Um, how would you handle this? Angelo Poffo gives him the absolute worst advice I think a dad could ever give a son. Because it doesn't make sense! It's like, well, you know, uh, you've done this a long time, uh, and I know you can beat them. Oh, yeah, uh, thanks. I'm gonna go work out at the gym with Hulk. Yeah! And then, the last thing Angelo says is, oh, I worry for him. Wow. 
Father wow. Father of the Year, Angelo Papo, folks. <laughs> All right, so now we go uh, to our featured match. We go to the main event of this episode of Saturday Night. It is a first-round match in the U.S. title tournament as Alex Wright takes on Big Bubba. Now, uh, Alex Wright, whose nickname at the time was Dusk Wonder King, he, he used to have a dancing gimmick, and I actually would dance like Alex Wright for a little, for a little while. Because he has, you know, he has like this weird club music, but it's not that bad. Um, so this is Alex Wright's sort of like rookie year in WCW. Um, so we find out that the winner of this match will advance to round two and will face the winner of the Ric Flair Patriot match that's going to take place on the main event tomorrow night. Because, you know, we couldn't wait eight days for Ric Flair to come back at Slamboree. We have to do it on the main event, you bastards. Wow. But no, this is actually... Um, this is a, a decent, respectable match. It's not that bad. Um, Alex Wright gets the early advantage, but Big Bubba uses his, you know, his strength and his size. And for a little while, it looks like Big Bubba's gonna get the win. At one point, he even hooks on an abdominal stretch, and he even tries to cheat by using the top rope to his advantage. But the referee catches him eventually. So we get to the end of the match. Um, Alex Wright does a missile drop kick from the top rope and only can get a two count on Big Bubba. Alex Wright then goes back to the top rope, does a cross body block, but Big Bubba catches him. And Bubba, holding him, runs with him and throws him, dumps, just dumps him out over the top onto the floor. Well, Fro, there's a problem with that. Because back in the day of WCW, if you intentionally threw your opponent over the top rope into the floor, you were disqualified. So Big Bubba got disqualified for basically killing Alex Wright. He killed a German while dumping him on the floor. And Alex Wright wins, and he advances into the tournament. After the match, Big Bubba attacks Alex Wright, and he tries to do more harm, but Sting runs in for the rescue, and he gets some punches on the Big Bubba as... Big Bubba rolls out of the ring, and that is the end of WCW Saturday Night from May 13th, 1995. Yeah. Um, for the, for, are you curious about the tournament in general? No. Oh. Well, anyway, Sting would end up winning the tournament. Um, because he would beat Ming at the Great American Bash. And the other semifinal match was Ric Flair against Randy Savage. That match never happened. So they both got eliminated from the tournament, and Sting would beat Ming, and he would end up being the U.S. champion. Um, overall, this was, a, this was sort of an enjoyable show, actually. Um... On you, uh, I mean, it's up on YouTube. I'm not going to say who it is that put it up, but it's about 45 minutes long. It's not that bad of a show. Um, there's nothing really boring about it. The, the only thing that really ticked me off was the fact that Ric Flair's going to wrestle on the main event tomorrow night against the Patriot a week before the match at Slamboree. So that ticked me off. Um, but no, other than that, it was an enjoyable, quick one-hour program. You had some jobber matches, and it wasn't that bad. It was enjoyable. So what I will do is, um, by the time you guys are listening to this, 
I will post the link to this episode on our Facebook group so you guys can check out this episode of WCW Saturday Night. So, hope you guys enjoy it as much as I did, because this really wasn't that bad of a show. Um, all right, I believe that's going to wrap it up, so why don't we do our, why don't we do our quick plugs, follow the show on, uh, on Twitter, we're at Wrestling Show 11, you can join our Facebook group, it is that, it is now called That Wrestling Show Fan Group, so, um, type that into the search bar on Facebook, uh, and you can join right away. And like I always say, if for some reason you cannot find it, click on the link in the description box and you are right there. Don't forget to visit the website. Click that was, Oh, go ahead. Click it. Click it, yes. Uh, don't forget to visit the website, that wrestlingshow.com. Uh, please visit the Patreon page, patreon.com backslash Bill's World of Podcasts. Um, and don't forget to check out w2mnet.com. For other wonderful podcasts, not only in wrestling, but also in sports and entertainment as well. And don't forget to check out another Digital Citizen. Fro, what are you guys talking about this week? Yesterday we talked about the conspiracy theory that conspiracy theory is a conspiracy theory. Hmm. You yes. know, I, you know it, it may sound weird, but I might have a conspiracy theory to that. Hmm. You never know. Uh, next week on the program, because it will be the next to the last episode of the season, Fro and I, we are going to preview Ring of Honor's final battle and WWE's Clash of Champions, and we will make our predictions as to who will win those matches. Uh, plus, we'll have another round of trivia, and... Maybe I'll do another review. Maybe I won't. Who knows? So, um, on that note, everybody, have a good, safe weekend, no matter what it is that you are doing. And when you are done doing whatever it is that you do, come back here next week for another episode of That Wrestling Show, the only podcast where all pro wrestling matters. And as always... Wrestle on!